Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly, and uh, I've got a good one for you today. I am in San Diego at Balboa Park. I'm going to walk around the entire park. There's museums. There's great places to see. Beautiful fountain. Just a great, great place. Nice sunny day. We, for all intents and purposes, are in a recession. You cannot deny this. A recession is basically two quarters of lowered economic growth measured by GDP. It can be within a region, it can be within a country, but I really think that we're in a, world, a worldwide recession right now. And I think that it is absolutely only going to get worse uh, with every issue, with inflation, with the supply chain issues, with the hiring issues, with just everything that's happening right now. So. Uh, before I get into it, please take a second to hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends and colleagues. Uh, don't forget we've got an email list uh, that you can sign up for. It's in the video description. If you want more access to me, uh, you can join our Patreon group and sign up for that as well. So let's get into it. Now here's a great article out of the New York Post. Uh, you've got two economists, uh, David Blanchflower from Dartmouth College and Alex Bryson uh, from University of London have talked about and gotten together about uh, the areas of a, re uh, of a recession. And you're seeing everything from consumer confidence going down, you're seeing all the warning signs in advance with the high unemployment, uh, with everything, you know, skyrocketing inflation, people not spending, and there just being these continual problems that were very similar to 2008. Now, as much as people don't want to admit about how bad 2008 was, it, it did come, across, uh, come along fairly quickly when the problem started to hit. These two individuals are talking about all the problems that you're seeing in advance right now that are warning signs that we're going to repeat that same uh, uh, you know, economic event over again. Now, again, nothing is the same. People cannot afford energy costs, they cannot afford the increase in food, you're going to see it just continue right now. The supply chain issues have created nothing but problems. You know, here's what's crazy. Here in San Diego, they have a few pumpkin patches that are kind of uh, huge. Uh, they've got one in Carlsbad that's right off the side of the freeway that people go and, and drive and pick up massive pumpkins. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, some little five pounder. I'm talking about 40 and 50 pound pumpkins they let people drive up and it's kind of cool because they can drive up and pick up these pumpkins. There's a pumpkin shortage. There's going to be a shortage for uh, Thanksgiving turkeys, for holiday turkeys, for holiday ham. They're talking about shortages of everything right now and it's only going to escalate, which leads to, you know, people talk about hoarding, okay? Now when you think of hoarding, you think of the disgusting person that doesn't throw anything out. Well, the difference now is people are hoarding common household uh, staples, food, water, you know, uh, toilet paper, uh, paper towels, things like that. Again, if you can buy this stuff right now and you can afford a little extra, you should do it. If there's things that your family uses and eats, like uh, breakfast cereals and things like that, I would get this stuff now. I'd get it as much as I can because it's only going to get worse according to all these experts. But these two guys, you know, it, it, the article's good because it talks about all the warning signs that we've seen in the past. And when you add everything up, it adds to recession. And uh, again, it's, it's the same problem in so many different countries, and it is global right now. So share your thoughts on this. I want to know what you guys think of this. If you think that there is a global recession, I think we're definitely in here, you know, in one here in the United States. But uh, share your thoughts on this. I really want to know what you guys think about this right now. It's kind of a fun place to hang out. The fountain's kind of cool. A lot of stuff to see in the park. I'll show it to you guys. This place is a really great place. This place is absolutely amazing to walk around. So many of these beautiful buildings and so much to see throughout the area. It's just absolutely stunning. Netflix just announced their earnings and had uh, really good earnings. They added 4.4 million subscribers, but the phenomenon that they're known for right now is a new TV show 
called Squid Games, which is Korean, and it's an absolutely, you know, uh, uh, just a mega blockbuster for it. But here's the thing. Uh, two thirds of the people on Netflix have actually seen part of Squid Game, which is staggering. Over 142 million people have watched at least two minutes of Squid Game according to their numbers. Now, here's the thing that's, that's even more fascinating is that this success of this international show has not added any new subscribers to it, uh, to Netflix. And there, there's two stories I'll share with you about this, but this is fascinating. Uh, people are not signing up because of this one show. So uh, have you guys seen the show? Does it interest you? Um, it, you know, it, it doesn't really interest me at all, I, you know, to say the least. Uh, I like movies. I like to watch movies. But then there's a lot of free things you can use. There's Tubi and there's Pluto TV and things like that that are absolutely free to use. And uh, I love that stuff too. When my daughter lived with me, uh, and my son for that matter, they had little household bills that were their rent around the house. And uh, I remember my daughter complaining that her rent went up when they raised the Netflix bill to 10.95 or something because that was one of her expenses. So share your thoughts on this, guys. I really want to know what you think. Uh, have you seen Squid Game? Do you care about that stuff? Do you care about movies? I know most people don't care about Hollywood or anything like that, but share your thoughts on this stuff. I really want to know what you think about that. Here's a few stories that I'm going to wrap into one. And first things first is Procter & Gamble. They make everything. They make Tide. Uh, they make Crest toothpaste. They make a ton of stuff. But they are raising the price on all the peripheral products like razor blades and things like that. It's a great article on that. Um, so they see costs of everything that they produce and all of their products in the supply chain going up right now. It is an absolute huge problem for Procter & Gamble. Now, Bank of America just issued a report on uh, investor bullishness. Bullishness is at an all-time high, but investor sentiment is at an all-time low. People are sick and tired of, of where everything's at and trying to be convinced that things are good. No one believes that things are good right now. Next thing is Zillow. With the uh, property market being as high as it is, Zillow has been buying uh, houses, buying a ton of them, thousands and thousands of houses. They've also been unloading houses at losses and doing some really nefarious things to manipulate the real estate market, okay? Zillow right now is out of the real estate buying game right now, okay? Which leads to the last part of this story. And this is the same thing that happened in 2008 and the crash that happened then. Right now, the real estate market is running into major problems with the appraisers. The appraisers are the ones that go out and dictate the value of what a property is and, you know, what people can borrow against it based on, you know, um, the house appraised this much based on the neighborhood, based on per square foot, based on this guy's got a pool, this guy doesn't, he's got a really nice bathroom, whatever, okay? But one thing that happened in 2008, rightfully so, is a lot of these appraisers had their neck on the line and these guys got their brain suit out for a myriad of reasons. And when the market started to go south, appraisers did shenanigans where they would go out and say, come on, Chuck, just got to get the house, you know, to 640. If it appraises at 640, we'll get the loan, everything will go well, but the house is only worth 595. So Chuck did this and eventually these guys got sued. Well, the appraisers now and the appraiser associations are saying, hold the phone guys, we're not going to do this. We're not going to just willy nilly say that these houses are worth a hundred grand over the asking price and they're putting their foot down which is slowing down the market even more. So again, with the theme of the recession, with the theme of real estate turning, if you don't believe that this is a problem right now, look at this, read the article about the appraisers, and this is the beginning of this. Whenever you hear news like this, like Bank of America and the sentiment of investors and people not feeling good about this, and Procter & Gamble saying, that we're gonna raise prices on everything else you buy, so think about this. You know, do yourself a search. What does Procter & Gamble make? Like I asked about uh, oil the other day, you'd be shocked at everything that they own and what they make, and everything that they make is going up. Now with all this wrapped together, it all points to the fact that things are going up and that there's a problem with uh, 
prices, there's a problem with real estate, and uh, you know, consumer sentiment, I hate that one, but uh, people aren't feeling good about this stuff. People are not, don't believe what they're smelling right now. What they're smelling is high prices and impending doom. So if that's what's cooking in the kitchen, it's gonna be a free buffet for everybody, okay? I'm right outside the San Diego Museum of Art and uh, places, again, there's so much to walk around, so much to see down here. The park is absolutely beautiful. The next story uh, comes from Business Insider and it talks about the supply chain shortages. And this is just ridiculous when I, when I tell you this. And that is, uh, this article says, we don't have a supply chain shortage. Americans are buying too much. We're buying too much of everything right now. That's the problem. Uh, with our supply chain. If we didn't buy so much, you wouldn't have a supply chain issue. Huh? Okay. Now, the fact that there are almost 70 boats out, you know, still in the ocean waiting to get unloaded just here in Southern California, uh, the fact that uh, the, there's not enough uh, truck drivers to unload the trucks and it gets even better because some somebody sent me a great story that I investigated and found out about and that is that in California, you have to have a truck that is 2007 or newer to drive in the port complex. That has been changed lately to 2010 or newer for emission standards so that there's not uh, energy issues with uh, California, okay? This changes now to where if you're a new truck company, you have to have a truck uh, registered that is 2014 or newer. Now, what this is gonna do is absolutely kill the independent trucker. It is, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit in the trucking industry is dead for two reasons. For this, because think about it, a 2014 or newer truck is like 200 grand. So to have a $200,000 truck just to be able to work the port, okay, they're not out there. Now, you know, most people are complying. Yeah, because most companies are larger companies. Plus, they've also raised the insurance requirements from half a million dollars to uh, like $5 million. It's made it completely impossible for these truckers to be priced, uh, uh, you know, they're being priced out of the market to say the least for these two things. So share your thoughts on this. It, it's terrible that this is happening. Uh, if you knew that the, uh, the ports were not working 24 seven, would, you, would you have been shocked to learn that? Because I was because I thought these guys were working 24 seven and still couldn't keep up with it. Now we find out that they're finally gonna work 24 seven and uh, you can't have trucks that are too old. You can't have all this stuff because of the emissions shenanigans here in the state. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. One thing I find fascinating is the negative news we're getting out of China. China has got huge problems that are just being compounded. And basically daily, we're getting more and more updates on this. You're getting uh, the problem with their energy crisis that they cannot uh, man their ports uh, 24 seven. They need to ship uh, goods uh, to foreign countries from their ports that they are absolutely behind on and they have the same problems that we're having here in the United States with the ports. Uh, you're seeing all these different warning signs from them and again, people in China are not buying their own goods and services. You're seeing those huge problems uh, within their own country. This is going to get compounded. It's only going to be worse as time goes on. I'm under the clock tower right now. Share your thoughts on this. The Old Globe Theater and Playhouse. Got the outdoor venue. It's just a really nice place down here. Here is a staggering statistic for you. And this again is from Business Insider. 89% uh, of all the stocks and mutual funds in the United States are owned by the top 10% uh, of our country, the wealthiest people. Now, okay, that's crazy. But now think about this. The top 1% own over half of those stocks. So you've got the absolute richest Americans owning everything, okay? Plus, as the stock market has shot up in the last couple years, year and a half, uh, you've seen these people just get richer during this time, which again, there are no 
it, it, whatever bad news comes out, it doesn't make a bit of difference. It just doesn't affect these people. It doesn't affect the stock market. It makes it so that everything still continues to rise. You know, share your thoughts on this. You know, uh, I was fascinated when Robinhood went public and Robinhood, it was divulged that the average person's account was under four grand. That's ridiculous, okay? Uh, it's not, uh, you know, you, you hear about all these Robin Hooders making millions of dollars and it's just not the case. Now, the next thing is Shiba Inu, which is a cryptocurrency coin that is jumping up right now in value and it's been the hot thing next to Dogecoin. And what they're pushing for is there are hundreds of thousands of people on a change.org petition to get Shiba Inu on the Robinhood platform. And I'm telling you, you can go watch this 24 hours a day from TikTok to YouTube to whatever, where they're talking about how um, Shiba Inu is gonna jump up the second that Robinhood gets on there. Now, again, with the Dogecoin morons that were telling you that if you put 25 bucks in, you can make a million dollars or 200,000, or I'm exaggerating, but they were talking about, you know, 50 bucks will turn it into 60,000 and things like that. They're talking about the same thing with, uh, with Shiba Inu once Robinhood gets a hold of it. You know, share your thoughts on this. Is this a big difference? Is it a game changer? You know, Weeble, you know, you know you, if you have a Weeble account, you sign up through the link below you can get a free share, but you can also trade Shiba if that's something you're into, Bitcoin and stuff like that. Does it, does that, is that a big deal? If Robinhood gets this, they're talking that the price could go up as much as 100%, which that's crazy. We'll see if it happens. Share your thoughts on all this stuff. I really want to know what you guys think about this. I'm going to cover a new feature here on I Allegedly, and that is cannibals, myth versus reality. So let's get into it. No. <laughs> You know one thing that's crazy about these museums is they have things like cannibals, myth versus reality. Just a minute ago, I couldn't get my camera out faster. There's a line of people to go into this show, so craziness, who knew? Um, gas prices are shooting up. The gas prices are at a uh, 20 year high, okay? You've got areas in the country, like right now, here in California where gas is uh, at uh, $5 a gallon, that's what I paid again today. And uh, we have not seen prices like this for nine years. When it spiked up uh, in 2012, we saw gas prices like that. I mean, what are you guys seeing in your area? I, when I traveled, you know, and drove to uh, Texas, I was pleasantly surprised how cheap gas was. Everybody just complained about how expensive gas was in Texas, and it was cheap, guys, it really was. So to pay $3 over $5, is noticeably different. So share your thoughts on this. What are you guys seeing? Because what we're seeing is inflation at a 30 year high right now and there is no end in sight for it. And gas prices, that is a tax that affects the poorest people. Everybody has to pay it, but if you need a job or you're trying to get someplace, uh, you need to have gas in the car and it's killing people and it's just an absolute drain on people's uh, pocketbooks and uh, their finances. So share your thoughts on this. I really wanna know what you guys think of it. Here's another supply chain story, and this is out of Yahoo Finance. And they're saying there is no supply chain problem. It's just the fact that we can't get things on shelves fast enough. Uh, they interviewed Vivek uh, uh, Sankaran from uh, Albertson's company, the chief executive officer. And this makes no sense, guys. If you cannot get the product, there's a shortage. It makes no difference if it's stuck in a truck someplace. Does that make you feel better that your canned soup is sitting on a truck that can't get to the store? The stores have empty shelves. There are kids in Denver that do not have school milk because that cannot be delivered properly. Now, you can sit there and talk about how there's plenty of food, there's plenty of stuff. That is ridiculous to, to think of it this way. Think about that Alabama school district that didn't get their food and those kids that get free lunch cannot get that. This is a true supply chain issue for everybody. And it's, it's just not the truckers, it's just not one area of the economy that's failing, it's absolutely everything. But when you have companies like Albertsons, Albertsons is a huge grocery chain here in California. And again, I don't know if they're national, regional, whatever, but uh, 
Uh, these guys are having trouble getting everything and they're talking about things that are off the shelf all the time. And we're seeing this over and over and over again. Share your thoughts on this, guys. You know, it's very nice to walk through a place like this. It's so peaceful, there's so much to see. This place has got all these different uh, koi fish here. Just absolutely massive. I mean, they're huge. They're 18 inches, just absolutely unbelievable. Oh, here's one right here. Here is something that is very interesting in that the first exchange traded fund for Bitcoin uh, was released and it went up 1% on its first day. Now, again, guys, if you are doubting if Bitcoin is real, like I've doubted if Bitcoin is real, why are they having exchange traded funds on the New York Stock Exchange if this is not something uh, that's going to be around forever? That being said, I have no intention of you know, investing in a, in a Bitcoin ETF, but this fund uh, makes Bitcoin very real, guys. It makes something that's going to be around for a very long time. Uh, Bitcoin right now, the filming of this video is only 1% away from its all-time high, 1%. So that being said, guys, this is something that uh, people should look at. You know, again, the purists, if you, <laughs> if you listen to Greg Manorino today, uh, he is so against the exchange traded fund for Bitcoin to say the least and thinks it's uh, uh, fool's gold and uh, uh, doesn't give it any legitimacy. So again, use your own decision with investing. Uh, it's going to be very interesting how this all plays out. Between now and Thanksgiving is going to be a very interesting time for cryptocurrencies because of the Robin Hood shenanigans with Shiba Inu. Uh, with this exchange traded fund and where it goes in the next uh, um, 30 days, that's just gonna be interesting. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. And I know Bitcoin's real, Dan, you're missing the boat. I know, tell me how much you put into it. Tell me what your exit point is. Are you gonna hold it forever? Is it gonna go to $5 million of Bitcoin? Tell me what you think. Tell me where you're at, where you started, where you're headed. That's what I wanna know. Are you going to buy this exchange traded fund? Does that interest you in any way, shape or form? There's a new proposal from the Democrats where they're going to raise that proposed $600 bank account limit to $10,000. And everybody's saying, yippee, that's great. Uh, and again, they were going to have everything reported inflow outflow. If it equals $600 in your bank account, it was going to be reported to the IRS. Now they've raised that to $10,000. People are going, oh, that's reasonable. It's, it's ridiculous because the idea of the inflow and outflow, think about this. The average person in Social Security gets more than $10,000. So every bank account is going to be reported to the IRS with this new proposal. The idea now, today, how it works today, is if you have a cash transaction over $10,000, it is reported to the IRS. So again, it's not time for celebration. This is still ridiculous. Think about how many transactions you have throughout the year that total 10 grand, okay? Again, grandma with her social security is gonna be reported to the IRS because she's doing something nefarious uh, with that tax money and with the bingo on Fridays. So share your thoughts on this. I really wanna know what you guys think about this. And uh, this place is really cool. I love places like this where you've got all these different places to walk and all the gardens are cool and set up. It's just really, really, just really peaceful all the way around. But again, stories out of Reuters, I'll include it below. Share your thoughts on this. I really wanna know what you guys think. But again, everybody's gonna get reported. It's not a fix. It is the same problem, just <laughs> done differently, okay? So share your thoughts on it, guys. I'm gonna end this video on these last two stories and that is this, uh, Facebook just announced that they're going to have a crypto wallet and it's going to be managed by Coinbase. So again, serious legitimacy uh, added to Coinbase. Uh, and again, Facebook is going to be in the crypto space in one way or another and their new 
uh, wallet is going to be called Novi. Don't know much more about it. The story is below. And again, do you care if Facebook's in the crypto space? Is that gonna give it credibility? Okay, you know, let me know your thoughts on that. The next thing is the first crypto NBA sponsorship was announced and it's none other than Coinbase. So Coinbase again for the win and uh, they're going to be sponsoring the NBA, the WNBA, all the peripheral uh, smaller leagues that the NBA has and they're gonna have rights to all that stuff, to the teams, to the logos, to absolutely everything, which is huge for uh, sponsorship. Does this mean anything to you? What it means to me is that there is long-term legitimacy to the crypto space right now, okay? Which again, the NBA, they have not released the terms yet of the deal. Someone will leak it and we'll find out exactly what they are paying for this, but it's substantial. And two wins for Coinbase this week has just been clobbered with their stock lately. So please don't forget to hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends and colleagues. And uh, if you guys want more access to me, sign up uh, on Patreon. Also, if you guys would like a free Weeble account, you can get a free Weeble account and they will give you a free share of stock and uh, you can trade Shiba Inu on that, okay? On Weeble. So sign up, if you put any money in the account, they also give you more stock. So enjoy, I will see you guys soon, onward and upward, and I will see you very soon.